Hi, everybody. I'm Professor Adam Thiemann of the Annex Labs at Bar Ilan University. And today I'm going to give you a tutorial on Tickle, the tool command language. No, we don't usually say TCL, we usually say Tickle. So why are we learning Tickle? Well, the reason is, is because it's the backbone of many of the EDA tools that we still use today. It was written all the way back in 1988 by John Oosterhout of Berkeley, who um, kind of built it out of frustration after there were many programming languages that were being built for each different EDA tool, and he wanted a way to interface with all of them. And it really caught on. And even though it's a dated language, and there are much newer languages that um, are very popular today, like Python, somehow Tickle is held on, and it is still used by us uh, VLSI designers in many of the tools that we use by companies such as Synopsys, Cadence, Mentor Graphics, etc. And that's why it's important for us to know about Tickle. You'll see that it's very similar to other types of um, shell languages, um, such as uh, CSH or Bash, or, or has these kind of uh, things that you would use that you would find in later languages like Perl and Python, but um, it kind of is a, a much more simple type of a language. With that, you can write really big, long programs and scripts. Um, they kind of can get painful after a while, so you might want to keep it um, to a level of inside your EDA tool. But if you really enjoy Tickle, you can use it as a real programming language. Okay, so how are we going to access Tickle? Um, you can do it from either inside the shell that will open with many of your EDA tools, such as a design compiler or Inovus or one of these things. Um, but you can just go in many of the Linux shells it's already built in with a, a command, you know, you write TCLASH and it will open a shell of Tickle. Okay, so Tickle is an interpreted language, like um, different types of languages that you've probably seen, like Python or MATLAB or so forth. We have a shell, we have a prompt over here, and when we write in a command, we don't have to compile it and so forth, we immediately get an answer. So let's start with the kind of most simple hello world type of type of program in Tickle. And whereas um, in C, you would have to, you know, write a whole uh, kind of program and compile it and then run it, in Tickle, you're, it's an interpreted language, so we're just going to write the basic uh, puts command, which is put string, and then um, write the string, which would be hello world, you know, with a, a nice bang over there. And when we hit enter, it's going to return to us at the prompt the string that we wanted to print, hello world. Okay, so we've wrote our first um, kind of uh, command over here. And I just want to make a remark that we can either um, terminate the command by pressing enter and going to a new line, or we can use inline a uh, semicolon. Sometimes you'll run into this, and I'll show you in a minute why it's kind of important to know. So I could have written something like put hello, comma, and then put a semicolon, and then in light um, written put world, and it will give me the same type of a thing. Um, however, puts adds a new line at the end of it, so we got an enter there in the middle. Now, I do want to tell you that it's very important to know that in Tickle, like in many other types of uh, scripting languages, you have a comment. So if I start with a pound, then this is a comment. And here you can get kind of uh, things that can really bother you, because um, when you're writing a script and then uh, sourcing it or copying it into your shell, you may stick a comment in line, like something like if I um, go, uh, sorry about that, if I go put hello world, and then I write this is a comment, um, when I press enter, I'm going to get uh, some sort of an error. And the reason that I got that error here is because I would have had to terminate my command with a semicolon before adding this is a comment after it. Okay, so now when I do it, it's going to be fine. Okay, so we've seen the basic, you know, puts command and the basic comment. And then I just want to explain to you something really important to understand about Tickle. It took me several years of using it to actually kind of comprehend this or uh, realize it. But if you think about it later on when you're struggling, you can understand a lot of things. Well, the concept is that everything in Tickle is a string. There are no other data types. There aren't ints and floats. There are in some way or another, but they're interpretations of a string. So everything you do is a string unless it runs into some sort of command that changes it from a string to something else. Okay, so that's an important thing because, and we're going to see it in a minute, where things are interpreted as a string unless you tell them they aren't. Okay, so let's go into the real data types, which I guess we would call a variable. And so variables are, um, are created with the set command. So if I do set A 
five in that way without an equal or anything like that. Uh, it's going to return five. And now I have a variable called a that um, is uh, uh, its value is five. So if I just write set a, it's going to return the value of the variable, which again is going to be five. Um, I could also print that. So I could use my puts again and I go dollar a. So dollar is going to dereference the variable. And so it's going to return five versus if I would have just done puts a, it's going to get the string a. It's not going to see a command to interpret that string as five so it uh, as a variable. So it's going to return the string a. OK, so when I want to use a variable, I use a dollar sign in front of it. Um, I can also put that in quotes. Um, that is to you know create this long string. But when I put something in quotes, uh, put a dollar sign in quotes, it's still going to dereference it. So if I do put um, a like that, I'm still going to get five back. What if I wanted to print dollar sign a? Well, then I would have to um, use a backslash to tell it that I want to actually print a dollar sign and not um, treat the string, uh, the, the dollar sign as uh, the dereferencing of the variable. So that will print for me dollar sign a. OK, um, now in saying that, what do I do if I want to say, for example, um, I want to print, uh, you know, the I want to print whatever is inside a, which is a five, and then have something come after it like four. OK, so I could um, go like, you know, something like uh, dollar sign a four. And what is going to happen there? It, it's going to interpret this a four as a string ask what the variable is that is called a4. It says there's no such variable and returns a um, uh, an error for me. So if you want to make sure that you've got the, the, the name, you know, um, encapsulated, what you're going to do is you're going to use curly braces. So I can do put dollar sign uh, a in curly braces um, and then four. And now it will print, you know, the variable name, the variable content followed by a four. And you see, I got 54 there. So that's kind of an important thing to realize and do. So the next thing I want to talk about is expressions. As uh, usually you do with a scripting language, we're going to want to do a lot of math or a lot of types of calculations. So how would I calculate something? If I just go something like 2 plus 2, uh, that's an invalid command. Or if I want to do something like maybe puts 2 plus 2, What's going to happen there? It's going to return the string 2 plus 2 because it's just a string. As I said, the argument is just a string. Everything is a string. We didn't tell it in any way to return something else. That, that's because instead of just doing puts, which is a print of a string, what we're going to do is we're going to tell it that the argument is an expression with the expr or expression uh, um, syntax. So we do expression 2 plus 2 is going to return 4, and then we've got what we want. OK, but now let's say we wanted to go and uh, put that expression inside a variable. OK, so um, I would think that I do something like, you know, set B um, is going to equal some argument like uh, 2 plus 2, right? Um, so set B 2 plus 2. Now we see it just returned 2 plus 2, or I can do puts dollar B, and what I have is 2 plus 2. Um, but so what I could do essentially is do something like set B expression 2 plus 2. And what's that going to do? Well, it, it caused things to kind of mess up. And the reason is, is what I need to do is I need to first take this expression over here, evaluate it, take the return value and set it into B. And I'm going to use the Polish notation type of thing that is commonly found in these different scripting languages. Um, and the way it's done in Tickle is with square, square brackets. So I'm going to, again, do set B. And then I'm going to use square brackets, OK, right, expression 2 plus 2 and then close the square brackets. It's going to first evaluate whatever is inside the square bracket, turn it into a return value, which is a string, and then set it into B, and then B will get that. OK, so now we see that it returned 4. And if I do put $B, I'm going to get a 4. OK, so um, again, that's a really important thing that um, if I use these types of the square brackets, I am going to uh, first evaluate whatever is inside the square brackets, bring in the return value, and then use it in the evaluation of the rest of the command that I wrote over here. The next point I'm going to discuss is lists. 
Okay, so lists are really important for Tickle. We use lists all the time. And um, there are three ways to make a list. And a list is just a list of strings, as I said before. So we can actually just go and make a string by uh, using our uh, quotations, which make a string. So I can do something like, you know, set, oops, I messed up over there. Set L1 is going to be one, two, three. It will return one, two, three, and Tickle kind of will be able to know that this is a list because it is separated by spaces. Okay, so this separation by spaces makes it know it's a list. Uh, a different way to do it is I can do set L2. I can use curly braces. So this will be four, five, six. So now I'm going to have a list that is four, five, six, and there is actually a third way to make a list, which is to, to do something like a um, command, which is called list. And then I do seven, eight, nine. Okay, it's going to first return a list from this command of list seven, eight, nine, and then it's going to set it into L3. Okay, so now I can do something like puts, you know, I can say um, list one is, um, is dollar score L1, uh, list two is dollar score L2, and list three is dollar score L3. And what you'll see is that I will get, um, you know, list one is one, two, three, list two is four, five, six, and list three is seven, eight, nine. Still, that's just um, addressing these as strings. I didn't do anything that has anything specifically to do with a list, but lists have all kinds of special types of commands. So they usually start in tickle with an L. So for example, I can go L length, and L length will give me the length of a list. So L length dollar score L1 is going to return three because as we saw, there are three members in, um, in, in L1. Okay, I can also ask for an index inside and the indexing starts from zero. So I can do L index zero, uh, sorry, L index dollar L1 zero and that will return the zeroth member, the first member inside L1, which is a one or I can do, you know, L index dollar score L2, one will return a five. Okay, um, in a cool way, I don't actually have to know what the size of the list is. I can uh, go L index um, dollar score L3 end, and it will return the last member in the list, or I can do L index dollar score L3 end minus one, and it will return the member before the last in the list. So um, that's kind of cool. Um, let's say I have a set L4, you know, um, something like uh, B, C, A, or something like that. I can do L sort dollar L4, and it will return A, B, C, so it will sort the list. So that's pretty cool. Okay, um, now, now that I've set my lists, I can go over to um, what is really popular to do, which is looping through you know, a list or looping through something or another. Um, and of course, similar to other scripting languages, you know, uh, Tickle also has fors and whiles and so forth. So I'll just show you a simple while command, which is similar to, I guess, a C while command. Um, so I'll set an, an iterator at zero, and then I'll write um, while, and I use curly braces. Um, dollar i is smaller than uh, 10. Okay, what I'm going to do is then open a curly brace. I'm going to write my command inside here, which is going to be, you know, to print dollar uh, i. Um, and then I want to increment the, uh, the iterator, which is a command incr increment i, and close it. And that's going to return to me 0 to 9. So that's a simple while command, but that's not the kind of thing that we're going to use as much uh, for loops. What we usually do use a lot for loops, which maybe you're familiar with from other uh, more advanced scripting languages, is for each. So for each is going to go over every member that we have in a list. So we're gonna write for each, um, and we're gonna give a name for the iterator. So let's call it like something like list item, okay? And then we're gonna give it the name of the list. So let's say dollar uh, L1, that was our list. So it's going to iterate over each of the list members inside L1, and then we can, for example, print out all of them. So let's print out dollar list item and close our curly braces, and it will go over you know, the list uh, L1 and print out one, two, three. 
Okay, so that's very useful and done very often. So we now know how to make lists, we know how to make variables, and we know how to make um, loops, both regular, you know, types of while loops and, um, and uh, uh, for each loops. There are also for loops and so forth. You can search on Google and you will find all the syntax for these things. So now we're going to go over conditionals, which are another very important part of scripting languages and of any programming languages. In other words, you know, if then else. So um, we had our variable A that we uh, set before. So A was worth five, if you remember. Um, and we can put some sort of conditional on it. So if dollar A, we're gonna put that in curly braces, equals five, then what we're going to do is we're going to put yes. Okay, and you see, I didn't have to actually go down to another line. I could have done this in line. Okay, but what if I want to uh, else, right? So if I can do the same thing. If dollar A equals five, um, then I'm going to, you know, put, um, you know, I can put five. Um, else if, in one word, dollar A equals four, then I can, you know, uh, puts four and uh, uh, puts four um, else you know I can put something like none okay and when I press enter it's going to uh, give me the value okay I could have said you know set a uh, three all right and then let's copy this line again as in this shell history is not enabled and we get none. Okay, so that's an if then else. Um, with the conditionals that we wrote, let's go over to procedures, which are also very useful. So if we wanna write, you know, some sort of line and use it over and over again with a, you know, a short function name, this is called a procedure or a proc in Tickle. So we will um, write the word proc and that will define a procedure. We'll write the name of the procedure. Let's um, say it, uh, let's call it plus something like that, that we're going to do a procedure that just does A plus B. What the arguments are, are going to be A and B. Those are the names of our arguments. And then we're going to open our curly braces and write what we want to write. So our word um, that we are going to use is return. That's our keyword for returning the value. And what are we going to return? Something that's inside square brackets, because we're going to figure out what it is first. And it's going to be expression dollar $A plus dollar $B. Um, and then we can close our cur curly braces. And now we can do, you know, we can write plus and give it the two arguments, you know, four and five, and it's going to return nine. If I just write, you know, plus five, we don't have enough arguments and I'm gonna get a wrong number of arguments. So that's pretty cool. I can do that, you know, just to prove it to you, let's just plus one, two, three, and four, three, four, three, and we got four, six, six. So that's a pretty cool thing. So procedures are really useful to use as well.